Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. This is a proper old hot rod. This is mental. <laughs> I'll take it to the road. It's time to do the happy dance. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. And today we're going to try and keep the matches away from the Rover because last time it was trying my patience excessively. It was basically having a very bad day. After being fixed comprehensively by Hawk Classics, he's done a fantastic job getting the car running. I did a few more jobs to it and the thing appeared to be on the verge, the cusp of being drivable. Then I came out here to try and make it drivable and it had basically committed Harry Curie. It did not want to work. According to the dashboard, we lost oil pressure. So potentially I had launched the engine. That's a lot of money and a lot of time all just potentially just destroyed because the oil pump appeared to have failed again. Secondly, I was trying to top up the gearbox fluid so the thing could actually drive. A simple task you might imagine, however, because of a failed or loose connection of a joint in a really inaccessible place between the bell housing and the top of the gearbox, it was dropping gearbox fluid out faster than it was going in, which was expensive and frustrating. And thirdly, even though the car had been kind of twitching in gear previously, suddenly it wasn't. It had lost drive, it was dumping gearbox fluid and potentially the engine was lunched. So today, with fresh eyes and a fresh cup of tea, we're going to see exactly what the situation is. And firstly, and most importantly, I've been and borrowed an oil pressure tester so we can actually check what the situation is under the bonnet, whether there is oil pressure in there or whether the oil pump has failed. What's happened, we need to know before we do anything else. Fingers crossed. <laughs> right, now, so first of all, we need to figure out what is going on with this car's oil pressure. At the end of the, I want to set fire to this piece of junk video, I said the first thing I need to do is go and get hold of a pressure gauge tester, which is what I've now borrowed from my friend Chris. Chris Smith with a K, mobile mechanic here in Maidstone area. If you need any mobile mechanic you can take care of, give Chris a call because he is your man. So this I'll plug in in place of the oil pressure sender down here on the side of the engine and then run the engine and hopefully it'll be pressure tick, 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 tick and it never stops. Incidentally, I'm drinking from the Volvo mug. Just to remind this car that the Volvo wouldn't do this kind of thing to me. So this is the gauge pressure sender. Now we need to match up whichever is the right kind of thread. Which I think is that one. I need to get a torch because I can't see what I'm doing. Ow! Ow! Impossible angle. Gloves keep snagging on things. Okay, so that's all hooked up. There's now only one thing to do and that is to quote Greg Wallace. Come on! Fire up! And we'll see if this engine is dead, or Fred, there's nothing that rhymes. Let's just do it. I feel almost sick turning this key. What have we got? Oh, we've got pressure. Look at that. Thank goodness for that. It is actually got oil pressure. We're sitting at 40 PSI, 80. Oh, that is beyond a relief. 60 psi just there, and that's doing what, two and a bit thousand RPM, not even that. Well, that's sitting there idling at just under 50 psi. I cannot begin to tell you how relieved I am about that, because honestly, I was concerned that not only was it going to mean repriming the pump, which isn't a major issue, which is a lot of hassle, I was more concerned that it was going to mean that as damage had been done by idling it because I hadn't noticed it had run out of pressure. So presumably it means this thing is kaput. I did test it and it did do stuff, so oh well. Well that is a major relief. Next thing now, I was going to, I was going to just jump in and start topping the ATF up, but I do need to go and tighten up that filler drain tube thing, which means getting the car up on some jacks. Unfortunately it doesn't move. 24 hours later. Okay, random stuff is now happening. This car is, well, I was joking, or semi-joking in the previous video when I said this car was cursed or possessed or something. 
So last time when it was no oil pressure, gauge not working as far as the gauge said, um, dumping all its fluid out of the filler faster than I could put it in and no drive, everything now changed. Um, having now established that there actually is oil pressure, I started the car up again and was running it and noticed that the gauge now works again for no good reason because I have not changed the sender. I've just put it back in again, reconnected it as it was the other day and now the gauge works once more. Bizarre! Secondly, I was trying to have a look at this filler. Here's a little close up. Um, it's down there. It is damp, but I was thinking I can't get anything on there. Maybe a crow's foot spanner might be able to make it. Maybe I can reach it from up underneath the car, but it's going to be like a four post lift kind of job. And I thought, I thought maybe I can uh, just trickle it in. If it's trickling in, it won't leak. I can get the, the fluid into the gearbox. And do you know what? That worked. It's still only at the very bottom of the. Uh, it's still only at the very bottom of the dipstick, but it did go in without leaking. And I wonder if either because I was pouring it in more quickly, that was the reason it leaked, or because I've now poured liquid down there, the seal has swollen up. I know there is a seal at the back of the gearbox, which is an issue. If a car with one of these gearboxes has been, has been standing a long time, that seal will dry out and take a while to re swell up again when fluid starts floating around in there and <laughs> it will dump all its fluid on the floor so that may be the same situation there so i sat in the car i knocked it into gear just, just i don't know just sitting there doing stuff and it moved no additional atf at that point but had oil pressure wasn't leaking and it had motion it had traction mm, i don't know so it's fixed itself all on its own it's fixed itself but not just that i was over in the barn this morning and uh, i knew I had got some ATFG somewhere else, and what do you know, ATFG, this has been opened, it's not completely full, so that does suggest that I had in fact put some liquid into the torque converter before it went in the car, good, anyway, right, I'm going to put the rest of this in there and see if the car will now move, because why wouldn't I? Restart the car, okay, oh, no we can't restart the car. <laughs> Oh, okay, the oil gauge has gone again, so it would appear to be an intermittently returning feature of the car. But anyway, come warm this thing up. Start moving it through the gears. Does sound so nice. This engine. Oh, it's got oil, oil pressure going now. Okay, so it's like a lazy gauge sender. I think it is a relatively new sender. It's something that was fitted to the new engine from brand new. It's done like zero hours on the car. Just doesn't seem happy. Anyway, right. Let's move this thing through the gearbox. Oh, we're getting lurches now. I did put a bit more fluid in there. And what I've figured out is that. Um, we ignore park, park doesn't exist, so the first position forward is reverse, followed by neutral, followed by drive. So we pretend we haven't got park, we need to adjust that up. Let's go and check the uh, level of the gearbox. If anything, it's actually too full now, but uh, I'm sure it might well go down once I've moved the car, because I am now going to try this for the first ever actual drive of the car. I've not done this before with this engine, so this is rather exciting. Let's move the big safety block, which was doing a surprisingly good job of stopping this car moving anywhere. Okay, here we go. First time I've driven this 4.6 litre engine anywhere ever. Into drive. Oh, it's moving. Whoa, whoa. That's got some poke to it. Jesus. <laughs> That's surprisingly brisk. <laughs> Did not expect that turn of, of speed off the thing. Oh, wow. It is, it is fast. I mean, properly fast. That's just uphill in the driveway. Let's just try that one more time. That's part reverse, neutral, drive. <laughs> oh, I can 
do the happy dance in a minute. This is amazing. This is astonishing. This car is over 50 years old, so we can actually drive it without an MOT, but I'm not going to take it more than just off the end of the drive and back again. Let's get reverse, please. Wow, this thing is fast. You can feel the power in it. It's mental. I'm trying to run over my own camera that's on the floor. So smooth and creamy, I love it. It's neutral, there's no park in this gearbox now, I've noticed. Okay, hold on a second. Forward into reverse. Let's go backwards. Drive and... This is a proper old hot rod, this is mental. I want to take this on the road now. I need to take this for a proper drive. This is astonishing. It's time to do the happy dance. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that was rather exciting. Got my heart beating like crazy now. This is astonishing. That thing. That is fast. That is all of the stuff I wanted from this car. When I put that 4.6 litre V8 into this car, I wanted it to be stupidly quick. I wanted a proper actual hot rod. And that is now what we've actually got. I don't know why it decided to commit Harry Kiri on itself and quit working. And now it's decided to work absolutely perfectly. But boy, does that work well. Okay, so now, game plan for the next day or so, trying to get this thing buttoned down. I am gonna get under these arches. This. It's all scabby and horrible, so wire brush on the wizzy wheel of death, get all this back to metal, and quickly paint this off with, um, well, this is like horrible rubber under seal from the factory, which traps rust. So I'm gonna get, get that all off, paint it with some uh, new under seal, new proper stuff that isn't gonna rust. Same on both sides. This is all sort of flaking off already, so that'll be taken off, no time. There is some puggy stuff in here. Don't know what that is, gonna get rid of that. If it means welding, I'll weld that. Um, slow down the idle speed because that is going way too quick that's not a big thing it's a twist of a screwdriver put those wings back on put the bumper and the grill back on and then polish the thing so it looks astonishing right i've waffled enough i'm very excited right so my excitement for the fact the car runs is slightly tempered by the fact i've now got to get extremely grotty and get underneath this wheel well and sort out well all this old horrible under seal stuff which is looking pretty grim I've got my whizzy wheel of death, got my headphones in, got my goggles, got a breathy thing, and I've even got a nice fresh cup of tea, which is about to be filled with bits of grit. But anyway, don't forget the Furious Driving merch store, furiousdriving.co.uk. You can find mugs, stickers. If you're coming to Rustable, coming to Rustable on March the 9th, and don't forget you do need a Furious Driving sticker in your windscreen. And the Rustable merch store is up as well, rustable.co.uk. We can now pre-order um, the Rustable hoodies and t-shirts and stickers and things, which look absolutely fantastic. Our designer has done a brilliant job on that. Um, so very excited. Anyway, right, I'm, I'm just procrastinating now because I really can't be bothered to go and spin this thing up and make a mess. Who knows what I'm gonna find? Well, I know exactly what I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find hopefully solid metal, but evidence of previous repair, repairs under here, looking at these uh, patches of metal there. I'm going to ignore them. As long as they're solid, I'm gonna ignore them and pretend they're not there <laughs> and just paint over with fresh, under seal but where there is surface rust showing through i've got to grind this all off to make sure it's all good right let's get grinding <laughs> okay oh i was right about the tea Well, haha, uh, we've got a lot of grinding done. This is a perfect candidate for the, um, for the blasting machine though, to be honest, because trying to get the grinder behind some of these places, it's absolutely impossible. So I think what I might do is actually do a temporary job here just to make it rust proof and tidy, and then come back once I've got the, um, got the blaster machine actually fully functioning and got the hang of it, and come and redo this. Also, there's a lot of repair panels under here. It looks pretty solid and it's lasted a long time. So I'm not sure whether to be worried about this for now or 
to paint over it or take it up to someone like Hawk Classics and get them to do like a really neat job of repairing all of this really tidily. And I could do it myself. Honestly, it's cold, it's very windy and I'm not exactly in the right mood to go and do a whole bunch of welding right now. So that does put me off doing it at this precise moment. You've got to be in the right mood to do stuff sometimes. Isn't it? January, freezing cold, strong wind, it's not going to go well. I think I'll smother this in rust proof paint. I'll go and get the BDX red oxide -y looking stuff, which is a rust killer as well as a, a good base coat. Paint everything up in that, so it's going to be rust proof for now. I have got two tiny holes I need to deal with immediately, so I'll go and sort them out right now. Then I'll come back to the, um, the question of what to do about all of this previous repair stuff uh, later on. It's actually a lot more than I thought. I can see that one there, but everything else is well hidden, so I don't know. It, it's strong though. It's just me but wanting this car to be perfect that I'm thinking I might cut that out. Don't know. Anyway. This little hole here, it is tiny and I can probably make it fairly invisible when it's done. Righty ho, there we go. I've used uh, the rest of this can of MDS rust neutralizing primer. So anywhere that's bare metal, this is protected and uh, should not rust anymore. However, there are areas I could not get to with the grinder. So I'm going to have to come back to this once we've got, as I say, the airline and the um, blasty blasty thing sorted out and then we can do a proper job so I'll let this dry and I'll give it a quick coat of I don't know hammerite or something where I've done my little repair down there that's not perfect but it's pretty good for I think it's under a wheel arch that one you can't even see where I've been which is the kind of thing which does make me think maybe I'll come back and do this myself rather than spend the money but yeah this area just here this area just here this area just here and this area just here all need to be redone it's pretty tough I did try and sort of put a screwdriver under it and see if I could pry it off and it well, it didn't want to go anywhere. It's just not very pretty, is it? Um, but there we go. At least it's rust free at the moment, which is all good. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's dry off, put some black stuff on it so it looks, uh, looks presentable. Another quick job while I'm out here, putting this back on the top of the uh, radiator so I don't lose a finger because that would be a bad thing. Yes, I know this is still flapping around, but this needs to be brazed on and I don't have any brazing equipment. So that'll have to continue to flap until I can get the car to a, a brazier of some kind. Area. All right, what I've decided to do about this whole inner wing area is to stop it from getting battered up and rusting while I'm thinking about it. I will do this properly later on, just not today. I want to get the car driving and running and make this a problem for the future. I actually need also to replace these rubber rubbing strips which have just disintegrated completely. I've got some more cans. I've got some more cans of Tetra Shut stuff stone chip rust proofing kind of under CD stuff the old school kind of way um, just to keep it safe for the time being and stop it from rusting off in the meantime. This will just be a temporary fix. And we'll come back and we'll do this really properly at a later day when it's warm in the summertime. Oh, I did very rapidly find that because it's so cold today, this stuff would not flow out of the gun. So I had to put it in a can of, or a bowl of hot water to try and uh, soften the liquid up enough to actually spray the damn thing. Properly. This is going to be stone chip central when the car's moving. Right, there we go. In the wheel arch, not perfect, but then also not bad either, and it will certainly do for the time being. And I've got to get this all scraped off anyway at some point, cut back properly. So. It's a job for another day and it'll certainly last us into the summertime, looking very nice indeed. I've not scraped off and blatted this up because that's something else I want to look at more carefully. Maybe change these springs out at a later date as well. Make it a little bit lower because that would be very, very cool indeed. Right, so the list of things to do basically never ends on this car, but we are incredibly close. And honestly, I'm way too excited about the fact this thing moves on its own to leave you hanging and sit on this and do any more. And it's going to rain in a minute anyway. So. This has been a major step forward in the getting this thing back on the road epic adventure. Next time we'll see the other side done. I'll probably do that off camera and just present it to you and everything else, all the other little niggles, we'll go through them as well. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you see the next episode of this thing doing actual driving and stuff. And join us again next time for more theatery. Thank you for watching, goodbye.